Hello, I've been playing some driving games lately using my RC car controller and the gamepad emulation feature of the IO mixer and it's been working out quite well so I thought I might make a little video to show how I set things up just in case somebody else wants to give it a try as well. Now for those of you who are just thinking to yourselves what the heck is he talking about? An IO mixer is one of these development board looking things here and you can use these to do the kind of thing that you might do with another simple microcontroller like an Arduino for example except that you don't need to do any source code programming to get things done. So I have one of these here and it's plugged into the uh, to the computer there and it's pretending to be a gamepad so the computer thinks this is a gamepad well, it's a composite device, so it thinks it's an I.O. mixer, but it also thinks there's a gamepad here as well. And I have the receiver for my Dumbo RC car radio there. And this has six channels on it, which is quite kind of nice. And I'm going to be using all of those. So I have them all plugged into the appropriate spots on the I.O. mixer. And we also have an NRF24 radio module, which is going to be functioning as a receiver for my head tracking. And there's also a piece of plywood and a GPS receiver there, but those are not <laughs> related to what we're doing. Um, the transmitter for the head tracker is stuck onto my baseball cap there. We have another IO mixer stuck on the front, just pegged, pegged onto the front. And there's another NRF24 radio module on that. And I'm just powering that with a power bank that's stuck into the, the headband of the hat. So the games that I've been using this with mostly are BeamNG Drive, Dirt Rally 2, Eurotruck Simulator 2, and Mud Runner. These are the ones that I've you know, spent the most time playing. Um, but it also works quite well with some other ones such as this RC Simulator 2 one, uh, Assetto Corsa and this original Dirt Rally. But in this video we're just going to be mostly looking at BeamNG Drive because that's the easiest one for me to alt tab between while I'm trying to record this video. Uh, and we'll also look at Eurotruck Simulator because that was the one that made me want to set up the head tracking. Before we jump into the IOMixer configuration stuff, I'll just show you the six channels that this radio has so that it's a little bit clearer what we're dealing with later on. Um, channel 1, obviously we have steering. Unfortunately, the range of the steering, the physical movement, is very small. It's only like 45 degrees, the total range of travel, which was a bit of a nuisance for one of the games I was playing, but um, I'll show you a way that I kind of managed to get around that mostly. Um, channel 2 is the throttle and brake like that. Channel 3 is this, actually I'm not sure if it's channel 3, but <laughs> the third one I'm showing you here at least, is um, this three position switch, so it goes click click into three positions. Then we have an on off toggle switch, which is either going to be on and it stays on, or off and it stays off. And then we have two dials up the top, and so I'm going to call those dial 1 and dial 2. Okay, this is the entire configuration that I ended up with on this IO mixer to, to play these games. But don't worry, you don't need anywhere near this much stuff to just do simple steering and throttle control. The reason I have all this in here is because I'm developing this thing and I wanted to explore the boundaries and stress test it a little bit and do some fancy things. Um, if we look up here though, and I'll zoom in on this four things here. So this is the actual bare minimum that you would need to do uh, two-channel you know car control steering and throttle so as we saw before we have four servo outputs or from the point of view of the IO mixer those are inputs so we have servo PWM input and those are going out to a gamepad output and a gamepad output can be an axis or a button and for the steering and throttle we want that to be an axis and we need to set the uh, what number axis this is going to be so axis 1 and axis 2. We need to also tell the IO mixer that that it needs to emulate a gamepad so we do that by uh, coming to this gamepad panel and by default it's just going to be virtual COM port which is the way that we use to communicate over the USB cable to um, to tell it what to do but if we want it to also be a gamepad we can select VCP virtual COM port and gamepad uh, on Windows and Linux this works great and the, the really nice thing about this is you can have the game running and then you can alt tab to this browser configurator and you can make tweaks and changes and then alt tab back to the game and test it immediately it's really really nice so Windows and Linux that works great unfortunately on Mac OS this composite device thing I uh, just couldn't get that to work but what does work is if you set it to gamepad only this is just for Mac OS 
you'll probably find that you need to do that. Um, the problem is then that you can't come back to this configuration interface and easily change things while the game is running, so it kind of sucks <laughs> on Mac OS. Anyway, um, once you've done that, you would click Set USB Class, and then you need to power cycle the IO Mixer so that when it starts up next time, it pre presents itself to the computer as a gamepad and a virtual COM port at the same time. And when you've done that, and you turn your radio on, you should see, uh, if we look at this bit here in the top left, you should just see this little red dot moving with your throttle and um, steering, like that. And then you can maybe twiddle with these um, calibration settings to get that right, uh, if it's not quite in the middle, and so on. And we should have a drivable car, but we need to also set up in the game what the game should do with this. Um, so here we are at the lovely Hirochi Raceway, and we're driving a bright orange Sunburst, my favorite. Favorite car to start with, at least. I'll change to other things along the way, but... Um, so to set this up, we need to go into main menu, uh, options, controls, and vehicle. And then we have, there's various ways you can control throttle and steering. If you're doing it with the keyboard, they're going to be separate buttons, right? So you've got a button for throttle and a button for brake. But what we're doing is combined throttle and brake on one axis of a gamepad. And you can see I've already set it up there, it's the Y axis. Um, and then for steering, we want this one here, steering axis mouse. And I'll just click on this to see what it's like. Um, initially, you you won't be seeing this screen. Initially, it'll be you'll just see the detecting binding button. But if I go, where is it? Steering. Yeah. If you want to change it later, you can click on this pencil icon and. Okay, so this is what you would see the first time you do it. It will just say detecting new binding, and it's waiting for you to move the. Um, the steering like that a little bit, in this case steering. Um, and then once you've done that, you may find you need to reverse the steering, which you can either do in the IO mixer or in the case of Beam NG Drive, you can do it here as well. We've got inverted axis. And this linearity thing, I think that is some kind of expo setting as well, maybe. Um, so it's nice that you can do it here, but a lot of games don't have that, so it's even nicer if you can also do it in the IO mixer as well. Then, then you can have RC Expo in, in any game. Um, so I guess then you would do apply. I'm going to do cancel because it's already set up. And then you would do the same thing for steering. And then you have a drivable car. Although you notice, see I was trying to turn the corner there. This was the first problem I had. At least with this car, depends what sort of driving you're doing again. But the problem with this is that you can't do a handbrake slide because all you have is just the two channels and when you brake all the wheels lock up and even though I'm steering hard to the right there the car didn't turn so my first problem was how do I do a handbrake slide so we'll look at that in a minute and um, did we look at RC Expo? I don't think we even looked at the steering properly, did we? Yeah, let's go back to the... Let's go back here. Alright, so this, like I said, this is really bare bones. Um, might be okay. But the first thing that I wanted to, to have was RC Expo, like we saw in um, BeamNG Drive, you can do it there. But we can also do it in IO Mixer. Sorry, I was getting a little bit ahead of myself. I thought I'd already showed you this bit here. <laughs> So instead of just uh, having the steering going directly into the game axis there, um, I put a little bit of RC Expo in the middle. So I think most of my viewers will know what this is, um, but if not, it just lets you have a little bit less sensitivity in the middle of the range, which could be quite important if you're barreling down a, a, a long, fast straight on a you know tarmac race course, and you just want to do a small input to your steering not a lot. So this is where that comes in handy. Um, if we look at properties here you can actually see a little bit of... I've added some uh, some help text for these. If you mouse over these you should see down below a little bit of explanation. Unfortunately if you mouse move the mouse down here you only get the one that's at the bottom because it's like the last one that you moused over. <laughs> but what you can do is if you want to look at this one for example you can just move the mouse sideways across like that and then it will stay there. I'll have to improve that later I think. 
but anyway, so th this um, this is what I was talking about here. There's a little bit of an info about what RC Expo is. Um, the highest value you can use is one. I'm using 0 0.9, so it's quite a bit for my steering. And then that's going into that, but it's not quite going. It's being scaled by this three position switch. So the reason it's being scaled, this is not a problem for BMNG, but when I was playing Euro Truck Simulator, sometimes you need to turn the steering wheel all the way. Like if you're at the depot, you're, you're um, trying to back the truck up, you need to really, really turn the wheel all the way to one side or the other. But then when you get out on the highway, you don't want to do that at all. <laughs> you just want small movements. So I think if you're using a, a proper like a simulator, uh, like a driving simulator steering wheel, that's not a problem because you can um, turn the wheel just a little bit to get the highway movement or you can turn that wheel like maybe a turn and a half each way like those wheels really turn around quite a lot to simulate you know driving a car or a truck but with this stupid thing I've got here I can only turn it 45 degrees total so what I had to do was give myself different modes so I'm using this three position switch to basically have a highway mode and a like backing the truck up mode and a, a mode in between so mapping is how I've done that and this takes the input um, from my three position switch and depending on what position that's in it's going to scale the output to uh, what have we got here 20 20 ish percent or half or full uh, so if I just put my put this back onto gamepad so we can see what I mean alright so that's the full full travel there if I put it to halfway or put my switch to the middle then it only goes that far each way and then finally for my highway mode it's just a little bit like that and this works out beautifully <laughs> it's a little bit tricky to uh, you don't want to be turning like if I'm turning in highway mode and then I switch into the other mode it's going to jump like that which is uh, looks a bit amateurish but um, yeah as long as you're careful about that it works quite well so I'm using that to scale so that's what the scale is for here it's basically taking the the output of this mapping and multiplying my normal steering by that um, so that wasn't important for BeamNG but keep in mind this this configuration that I've got here this is for all of these games um, that I've set up so some of them have little quirks that need to be um, worked around like that and that's one of them now let's get on to the uh, handbrake slide so this is a throttle setup here I've got throttle and instead of going from throttle directly to the output axis there I've got some other stuff in the middle have again RC Expo not quite so much this time just a uh, 75 percent ish and then we've, <clears throat> we've got this stuff here to figure out whether we should be doing a handbrake slide right now and the output for this is going to be a button so control type button for this one um, and in BeamNG let's see we have uh, controls vehicle this is parking brake and I've set that to button zero like that so that's what's going on with this one um, so how do we how does this work though well what I decided to do is that if you're doing a handbrake slide you're kind of braking anyway you're trying to slow down kind of so I thought what if I made it so that when I slam the brake all the way to the top like that oh you can see over there on the left there so when it goes all the way to the top that that position there we're gonna call that the position that we want to do a handbrake slide not a normal brake so what we need to do is we need to push that button but we also need to not brake otherwise the front wheels will lock up like they did before and we still won't be able to turn so there's a little bit to it but basically what we do is we uh, we do this check here and we check if the throttle is less than or equal to a very small number in this case this is um, this is about as far as my throttle goes so if I turn this on you see that when I'm doing nothing it's about 0 0.5 and when I full brake it's 0 0.013 ish and full throttle is one of course or oh yeah it actually goes all the way to one yeah anyway so this braking hard check will tell us when the 
the brake axis is all the way braked. And uh, so I have this other check here. This is a logical and. So it means that it's going to check if we're braking hard and I have that other toggle switch on. That was the one that has a little blue light on it. Because I didn't want to have this hand braking behavior all the time. Um, if you're driving around a, a, a track, like you're uh, like you know racing circuit, you don't want to be doing handbrake slides around the track. You want to be able to do a full brake without uh, having the back you know flip around on you. Um, so I'm just using this toggle switch to either enable this handbrake behavior or disable it. Let's turn that off. Turn that off. Sometimes these don't go off very well. Off. Okay. Um, yeah. So then. We have this decision where we've decided whether we want to do the handbrake or not, and then we use the result of that as the input to this selector. So this this selector is like an if statement: if something, then something, else something. So it's the the then and the else are these things here: the pass and the fail. So if we're doing a handbrake, the throttle, like I said, uh, we we don't want to brake, we don't want to brake, and we don't want to throttle. So we just do nothing, which means 0 0.5. It's just put it in the middle. If this test fails, in other words, we're not doing the handbrake, then we just do whatever the normal throttle control was. So let's see how that works. Keep your eye on button number one there, that's this little square. And I have to remember to turn my oh turn the radio on and then turn my handbrake mode on. So you can see See, when I turn the switch on here, we either get a 0 or a 1. And now, if you look at channel 2, when I get all the way to the top here, all the way to the left, button 1 comes on, and channel 2 goes to the middle. Like that. And now we can do a hand, handbrake slide properly. Well, as good as we can do probably with this... Um, with the setup. Oh, um, not quite what I was trying to do. Let's see if I can just uh, let's have a look at these wheels. You can see the front when I do that. The front wheels keep rolling, and that lets me turn. Okay. I was in my imagination when I was preparing for this video. I thought there was I was going to do a sweet handbrake slide around that corner. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, I'm in highway mode for Euro Truck Simulator. That's oh, there we go. <laughs> I was in I was in highway mode, so my steering. See how much my steering's moving in highway mode? Hardly at all, right? And then I put it into the normal mode, and we get the full. All right, let's try that again. So we want to, of course if my finger doesn't slip as well that would help. I find my finger slips out of the brake a lot for some reason. But anyway, you can see we can actually do a high handbrake slide of sorts. What else do we have to look at? Actually that's, that's about it for the, the basic controls. I have a couple of other things over here. Um, the dials on the top, I decided that what I would do with those is use those to rotate the view. This is for BeamNG. Oh, and I think Mudrunner actually did this. You can do this as well, maybe. Uh, so what we're going to do is take the value of the dials, and if it's in the middle position, we don't want to rotate at all. Um, only when we go away from the middle position by a significant amount, we want to let the view rotate. So the view rotation is going to be done by an axis. So this is axis 3 and axis 4 for rotating those two. And it's kind of tricky to make sure you get the dial in the perfect middle position. Basically it's impossible because it's an analog input. You're never going to get it exactly in the middle. So to stop it from continuously rotating a little bit just because you had it a little bit away from the center, I'm using these snap to nodes which basically says that um, if the incoming value is within 0 0.1 of the anchor point, which is 0 0.5, then uh, it snaps to that anchor. 
So basically any input from 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 coming in will be sent out to here as a 0 0.5. So let's just uh, do that. So I'm <coughs> now I'm twiddling with the dials on the top of the radio. And so that's, uh, that's Y, I guess. And then we have X like that. Um, so I figured that I would use this because I got a little bit annoyed about having to reach. The other way to do this is with the mouse like that, right, right mouse button. And I got a little bit annoyed with having to reach for the mouse every time because it, it was so nice to have everything wireless doing, doing it all on the radio control. But what I found is that this is just a little bit fiddly. I use it sometimes, but not much. Um, so these dials, basically, I, j I just wanted to do everything with all six channels is the thing, you know. So, yeah, I ended up not really using this th that much, but it does work properly. Um, okay, so we're going to have to switch over to the <laughs> Eurotruck in a minute to show you what's going on with the rest of this. Um, all the stuff down here, this is all for the head tracking. Um, so I guess if you're just doing basics, actually, you know what? This bit here, this is all you need to do driving, basic driving, even nice, you know, driving with handbrake slide and stuff. Um, so I'm kind of debating whether I should even look at this head tracking stuff in the video, but it's kind of neat. And it does get a bit complicated though. The main problem with this is that the your input on the IMU is not an absolute value because it's not relative to gravity. Pitch and roll are reference to gravity, so they're an absolute value. So the pitch uh, is quite simple. So we just take the pitch angle. Um, it's coming from an NRF24 input, as we saw before. This is um, done over wireless as well. For testing or initial setup, what you could do is just use the IMU that's on. Uh, on the same IO mixer, so you just connect it. Whoops, you connect it like that. Um, but I wanted to have it wireless, and I wanted to stick this on my hat, you know, so it's convenient to use. So instead of that, I did that, and then I'll get rid of this one. And if we come over here, this is the configuration that's running on the transmitter. So this is the one that's stuck to the brim of my baseball cap. Uh, there's really nothing here because all it all it needs to do is read the pitch and the yaw angle out of the IMU and send those over the uh, NRF24 radio to the receiver. So so this is the transmitter and then this side is the receiver and we just need to match up these channel numbers so make sure the right channel is uh, being read. And the other thing we need to do since I've waffled about this I might as well just finish off properly by showing you in the features here. Uh, we need to also say that this one is the transmitter, which we do by selecting the roll as one-way transmitter. And we can either send as a byte or a float. Um, for this, I wanted to have decent precision, so I'm using a float for both fields. So that's just F and F there, and you can see it's eight bytes total. Uh, field one is a float, and field two is a float. And then you just need to make sure that on the receiving side, you also put that same packet format in there. So if we look on the receiver, uh, features. So the receiver here is a one-way RX and then FF again. So that's all you need to do to set up the NRF24 connection. Um, so once this pitch angle comes in we just do some simple, looks like I needed to reverse it there and then we divide it by 90 degrees and then dividing it by 90 degrees will get us approximately 0 to 1 range um, and then we want to make it so that the uh, 0 0.5 is when you're doing nothing. So we add 0 0.5, that shift just shifts it uh, so that the center is 0 0.5. And then we clamp it so that it's only between 0 and 1 when we give it to the to the gamepad output there. Um, and let me just see if I can show you that. Okay, here we are in uh, London, I think this is. We're at the Volvo dealership. And what am I driving here? I can't, oh, it's a Renault, isn't it? Yes. I left my trailer at the uh, the other place because it was just a little bit easy to get around for this demo without having the trailer on the back. But anyway, um, 
So in this game you can use the mouse to look around and look out the back to back the truck up and look over to the left and right to make sure that you're not pulling out into traffic and causing a collision and losing money which is really annoying. But what I've found again when you're using the RC car controller to control things it's just a little bit irritating to have to reach for the mouse to do this especially when you you have to drive the truck and kind of look around with the mouse as well and for you guys that drive RC cars a lot I think especially if you do filming <laughs> for YouTube a lot of people are quite good at driving with one hand but I'm not um, and there's no th this like this thing's slippery too it doesn't oh you can see my steering wheel turning uh, yeah the the steering wheel on this radio needs some kind of friction on it so it doesn't slip anyway so what I wanted to do was use my hat cam to do this so if I move my hat up and down like this now I'm just holding it in my hand to do this but it lets me look up and down and I just realized this is not very convincing is it so <laughs> let me just show you um, with the actual camera uh, the handy cam what's going on here so if I lift up it goes up push it down it goes down huh? uh, well we're getting a little bit of your movement as well Oh, well, that's okay because then I'll show you this now we're going to look at the your setup in a minute but basically I guess this is a hang on is it on the camera properly yeah so we look down we look up looking down and look up you don't do that much so it's okay that it's kind of slow in fact I hardly ever do that but you can do it and then so the your is like this like that works quite nicely and this is the setup screen for this game. You want to choose um, IOMix or keyboard and IOMix, so it looks like I've done there. I set all this up a couple of months ago, so <laughs> this particular part of the video is not really that fresh in my mind, but I think you want a wheel controller subtype. And again, you would click on here, and then it would let you uh, would detect the movement in one of those axes that you want to set. Uh, the one that we were just looking at there for the head tracking was uh, look up down axis and then look left right axis so you would click on that and then you just have to be quite careful to only move in the one axis that you want to do oh you can oh look at that my you can see my head <laughs> I'm actually wearing the hat on my head now um, I'm not going to show you that because it makes me look like a right tool but you can see that when I move here you can see this yellow uh, yellow bar there when I move left to right and then when I move up and down uh, anyway to get back to this okay so pitch pitch like I said is pretty easy because we are able to use an absolute value of pitch uh, your uh, is not so easy because it we can't do that so basically we have to do this tricky business where we subtract the current your value from what it was last time uh, so remember this system is all running at 50 frames per second or 50 Hertz So every 50th of a second we check what the your value is and then you know check what it was the time before that And then we know how much we've moved So it's a little bit uh, more involved to to set up um, basically whoop, I'll just put all that stuff down the bottom because that's for something else which I'll get to in a second but basically we we subtract the your angle from what it was last time so we've got this delta, delta just does that for us and then we just do some uh, scaling and shifting again to get it in the right uh, to get the center and at 0 0.5 and clamp it so this this bit here is what we saw before so that actually was good enough but we had a new problem can anybody guess what the problem with this uh, this subtracting and you know this relative delta kind of thing is that's right it drifts because we don't have an absolute value or like an absolute position of it we're just looking at the relative value so what will happen is all right if I push a key on the keyboard if I push one it sets me at this perfect view that I like for for most of the long distance driving and if I look to the right a bit like that that's good if I want to see what's coming from that way then this is good if I want to see what's coming from this way or even all the way around the back when I'm backing up but what you'll find is that when when you put your head back in the middle which I've just done it's not quite in the middle 
because if I push one on the keyboard again you can see it this is the middle so every time well not every time but quite often you'll go you'll move away and then back but you won't get right back to the middle so I still found myself having to press one on the keyboard sometimes and I'm trying to avoid having to touch the keyboard of the mouse right that's the whole point of this so I set up this elaborate system here and what that does is it checks if the uh, hat is currently moving which um, let's see if we can okay so if I sit still this is going to be zero then if I move a little bit while I'm moving it's going to be one so that's what that does it checks if the the current your value is within this range actually it's doing an outside range if it's outside that range and then we want to use that to start a timer so this is a timer node and it's a duration of two seconds but it never gets to start because all the time we're resetting it or at least if my head is moving this value is going to be one so this reset value is going to be true and, and this timer will just be sitting there on zero and then when my head stops moving it will be allowed to count up to two so I'll just turn this one on <clears throat> I'll just turn this one on there we go <laughs> see that's that's a bit dodgy that I'm not quite sure why but it's two now because I'm sitting still now if I move my head it goes to zero and if I stop you see it counting up to two and if I move my head again and then I move my head all the way over here and then stop and it counts up to two again what's the point of that <laughs> well what it's doing is it's detecting when my head has been sitting still for two seconds and then I'll just turn that off oh okay so there you're not moving for two seconds uh, so this condition checks if the timer output that we were just looking at here that one is equal to two and this is a floating point comparison which is usually not a good idea but in this case it's okay it works um, so if it is equal to two we want to push that button uh, so let's just go go over here so the, the whole point of this is to get to this button and basically the button is going to do what I did with my keyboard uh, when I pushed one on the keyboard to recenter the view so there's a couple other things in here I also also don't want to have this mode enabled all the time so I'm using that toggle switch again from before that we had up up there that one uh, it's only gonna reset the view when that toggle switch is on um, yeah so I guess that's enough explaining explanation of that so let's just see if I can demonstrate it um, now you notice it's even if I sit still the view does not reset at the moment because I didn't want it to do that all the time because sometimes you're backing the truck up right like I'm backing up like this I want to keep looking out the back but my head is going to be still so I don't want it to suddenly snap to the front of the truck again while I'm looking backwards but now now I'm looking straight at the screen and you'll notice we've got lots of drift but if I click uh, click the toggle switch on the radio so now we are in the mode where if I move my head around a bit and then I bring it back to the center and then stop you see it snaps to the center and every <laughs> because I'm always moving a little bit approximately every two seconds it's going to snap to the center like that so that's not good either so basically once I've got it once I know that the, the drift has been reduced to nothing or almost nothing I'll just turn that toggle switch off and then I'll drive around and then every now and then I'll just feel like the drift is a bit too much got to remember oh see this is this is a problem I had before I would drive out into the middle of the road and somebody would hit me because I wasn't I was too lazy to look left and right so I just pull out I found that if you do it really slow um, the cars will give way to you and they won't they won't crash into you but see now right now I'm looking a little bit to the right I can't see the mirror in the left so I'll just click that toggle switch briefly and now I can oh hang on a minute let me put my head in the back in the middle there we go so overall um, it's working out quite well 
To be honest though, to be 100% honest with you, after doing this for about half an hour, I began to feel slightly nauseous. So I'm not sure... Um, I've only done it for like two half hour sessions and each time that happened just a little bit, you know, just... So I'm not sure if in the long term this is going to be really what I need to be doing. Oh, going the wrong way. <laughs> not supposed to do this either, but... Oh, there's a cop there. There we go. Um, yeah, so time will tell whether this uh, head tracking is going to keep making me sick, or maybe I'll get used to it a little bit. I also got a little bit nauseous when I used the um, Oculus Rift for about two hours one time. I was supposed to come in backwards for this, wasn't I? Yeah, so the Oculus Rift didn't work out well for me. See, right now we want full steering range. I want to make sure we're not going to hit that. Can we turn around here? Yeah, I think we can. So full, full lock is required here. And now I'm wondering, am I going to leave this in the video? Or are people going to get bored of watching me back up a truck? But it's just so nice to be able to do this without having to reach for the mouse all the time. And I've got both hands on the controller. So I can do a good job of, you know, give, getting everything lined up and stuff a little bit more. Oh. Okay. So now I've got my trailer on and we're ready to go. And that's probably going to be the end of the video. I can't really think of a whole lot else to say. Um... I was going to look at some other games like the Dirt Rally and Mud Runner and stuff, but uh, will I do that? Maybe I'll maybe I'll put a little bit of footage in after this for those of you who are still watching. Oh, by the way, I've been streaming games on Twitch a little bit lately. No particular schedule, just a little bit here and there. My sleeping pattern's really terrible, so it could be literally any time of day. Um, so if you're bored and you feel like joining me there, um, yeah, we can chat about whatever. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.